Wagwan Wagwan, welcome to my channel. I am the DIY Yardy. In this video today, I'm doing a rack and pinion replacement on a 2007 Chevy Impala. And these are a list of the tools I used. Flat screwdriver, 13 millimeter wrench, the 18 millimeter wrench, and a 10 millimeter uh, 3 8 drive. Uh, 18 millimeter crow foot wrench uh, extension, 3 8 drive ratchet, 19 millimeter uh, half inch drive and a half inch drive ratchet, and my uh, pliers, a hammer, and a pry bar. Okay, now getting into this job, first thing I did was uh, remove the intake or on this car is the um, mass airflow meter. Got that out of the way. Well, that's where that's what holds the air filter, so I can have space to work down in there. Because the first thing I actually started with, to me, which is what usually gives me the most problem, are getting these two lines pulled. These are the uh, power steering fluid lines, the in and out from the rack and pinion. Okay, so I use the crow foot on the first, well, I use it on both actually, but on the first one, I use the crow foot, the, the furthest line forward or to the front, all right, because that line, it's in a very awkward spot and it's kind of hard to get, you know, any, any like a wrench or you know any other tool in that position so the crow foot 18 works best for me there in that position all right i got that pulled and then i'm going to go on to the next one once i get this moved out of the way and you know like i said i i go at this first for that one because you know like I said, a lot of times these these right here gives you the most problems to get these pulled. So now I'm using my 18 millimeter wrench on the second one. And you see that one, once you get that first one loose, the second one you have a little more room to work with. So it's not as bad as that first one. So second one loose and getting that pulled. And remember to have something sitting under the car, big enough drain pan to catch, um, you know, any any fluid that might start to leak down in case you don't want to make a mess of your driveway or floor or wherever you're working. All right, so next, these are the bolts that's holding the rack and pinion, okay? So these are 18 millimeter uh, bolts. That's the side with the nut. And there's one on each side of the rack. So I'm gonna get these pulled next. So what I did, I used um, the pliers to hold on one side, but it, you don't have to use the pliers. You can have another 18 millimeter, another wrench, another 18 millimeter wrench and um, pull that. And um, also, I pulled these um, bolts without removing the um, sway bar. I was actually trying to do it without removing the sway bar, but I would suggest if you're doing this to remove the sway bar before pulling these bolts. It will, it will give you more space to work. All right, so you see me here loosening the sway bar. I was actually loosening the sway bar to get more room to work. But even though I, I loosened the sway bar, I should have removed it from the car. I, I didn't until after removing these bolts. But I would suggest you do that. So I actually loosened all the all the sway bar um, bolts, both 
the ones that are holding it to the frame of the car and also to the linkage. So these are all 13 millimeters, the linkage bolts as well as the clamp bolts, the U-clamps that hold the sway bar in place. Okay. So you'd need two 13s to loosen that up. So you're going to do both sides of the car. Linkage on the on the driver's side and and clamp U clamps as well as on the passenger side. That's what it looks like once you got it loose. Alright, so now what I'm doing here is the outer tie rod. For the rack and pinion. So we gotta straighten this pin in order to remove the pin. Let's straighten it out. Okay, get that pin out of there. Then that's a 19 millimeter bolt or a three quarter, um, three quarter drive socket. And also, most important, remember if you're when you're doing this kind of work under a car, you notice I have two jack stands on the frame supporting the car. Never get under a car without using your jack stands don't trust a jack only okay i've seen very dangerous consequences of trusting just a jack all right use your jack stands whenever having to get under a car to do the work from under the car all right so use the hammer as you notice I use the hammer there to tap on the um, tap on the part where the uh, once I remove the bolt I'm sorry the nut from the tie rod hand I use the hammer to tap on that area to break it loose okay so you tap you tap on the spindle not not the tie rod okay so I'm going to get this side loose. Same as I did the last side. Okay. So All right, got the rack and pinion loose. I'm sorry, the um sway bar loose. So what I was doing here is actually, you know, trying to move it up to get some more room to work. But I should have taken it completely out of the car at this point. It would have given me more space to work. But I, I just wanted space to get the bolts removed. So that's why I did this here. But I would suggest you go ahead and remove the linkage or the sway bar completely out of the car at this point. It will definitely have more space where you could probably use a uh, ratchet, a socket and a ratchet, you know. And you can see the leaks on this on this rack and pinion boot. So that's the reason for this job. It's leaking as well as the steering wheel is tight, tight to turn. Okay. So this this job is to correct that issue. Well, two issues: the, the power steering fluid leak as well as a tight steering. And pulling here with my 18 millimeter um, wrench. And this is one of the bolts that hold the rack and pinion to the frame of the car. Remember, these are 18 millimeter.
and please uh, if you find you know this video helpful I'm actually kind of new on YouTube so I'm trying to get my you know channel to grow help it build so I'd appreciate if you would hit the thumbs up button and subscribe you know it's totally free to subscribe and you know hit the thumbs up and you know hopefully you can suggest to someone else you know who you think this channel might be helpful to I'd appreciate that very much okay so I'm, I'm getting the bolts removed right now from the rack got one out already on this this is the second one so this one is kind of tight so I already got the the nut taken off from it this is just the bolt it's a little tight so I'm using the wrench to back it out So now I'm going to go ahead and remove the rack. I'm sorry, the sway bar. Let's go ahead and take it completely out so I have more space. And this this should have been the first step after um, after pulling the power steering fluid lines. I I should have just gone on and removed this completely from the car. It definitely would have given me more space to work, but you know, I made the mistake, so you don't have to. <laughs> All right. So okay. So now I'm gonna get the steering coupling um, pull. So use your pry bar to pry up on that boot, the boot that covers the steering couple. Okay, so that's a 10 millimeter um, bolt that connects that couple to the rack and pinion. So you're gonna turn. You want want to turn the steering wheel slightly so that you can get to the head of the bolt. So I'm using my 10 millimeter with my ratchet. And that's kind of an awkward position to work in there, so I'm going to definitely need to put the extension on. So I've got the extension on. little bit awkward working with one hand but trying to film hold the camera and film at the same time okay so that's the bolt got that removed so now I gotta get the coupling separated from the rack so use my pry bar to pry up on that coupling so you just got to pry up on the coupling Sorry about the shaky camera, but trying to film in this tight spot. So push up on the coupling. Should slide right up and off. It might take take a little work, you know. All right. So I got coupling off. So. I moved everything to the side of the rack. So now the rack is actually ready to come out. So got to pry up on it. Okay, first before that, there are these lines. These lines here are the uh, power steering lines. They're actually in a little hook 
on the rack like a plastic hook so you have to unhook those first before sliding the rack out all right so now i'm prying up on the rack this is on the passenger side and i'm going to go to the driver side again and pry up on that side also So once you pry up on it, it's, so the rack is actually sitting in a track. It's like a track built on to the subframe of the car. So you want to pry it up out of the tracks. And then once you do that, you're going to slightly twist the rack forward or tilt it forward from the top. You're going to tilt it away from the body of the car towards the engine of the car. And I've seen, you know, some people lower the subframe of the car to in order to get the rack out. I'm I'm doing taking this rack out without lowering the subframe. It's going to come out. It will come out without lowering the subframe. So like I said, you twist it towards the engine and you pull towards you, okay? It's enough space for, this, for it to come out without lowering the subframe. All right, so there's something holding it on the other side. I'm gonna go around and see. It's, in, it's still a, you know caught in the tracks on this side a little bit, so I'm actually gonna pry up on it and I'll leave the pry bar in there to hold it up, hold it in, uh, above the tracks while I go back over, go back over to the other side and pull it out. There we go. And like I said, no need to lower the subframe of the car. Once everything is loose, this, it, and you maneuver it in the right position, it will slide out. Okay. So, that's the old one there. And this one, the customer actually got a used rack, so I'm replacing it with a used rack. But the, the used rack is sound. It's, there are no leaks. It's, it looks to be in good condition. Okay. So, this is the used one that I'm replacing it with and I'm doing the reverse of what I did to get the old one out I'm doing the reverse to get this new one installed please remember give me a thumbs up if you find this video helpful and please consider subscribing. It will help to for me to build and grow my channel. And it is free and I definitely will appreciate that. All right. So thank you. If you do that, I will appreciate it. All right, so getting back to the installation. Uh, there's one thing I, I forgot to mention when you pull the old rack out you want to put it lay the old rack next to the rack you're going to install and make sure everything is in the correct uh, position line them up exactly next to each other and make sure the right um, outer tie rod and the left outer tie rod are at the same position and that the that little shaft this shaft here that you're seeing right now should be lined up in the same position okay this is prior to installing the new rack and pinion make sure everything is in the same position so when you're putting this the replacement rack and pinion in you don't want to move move it from that setting so you're not going to push on the tie rods when you're installing this you're not going to push on it or pull on the tie rods to move it from that position you're only going to hold on to the body of the rack and pinion 
and make sure it gets in the right position, you know, in the car, okay? And the reason for this is, you know, you don't want to, you know, get the rack and pinion in the car and it's not sitting in the right position. You want to make sure that, you know, it's centered, okay? Make sure that it's centered in the car when you're when you're reinstalling it. Okay, so now I'm pulling the boot, pulling the boot back over that shaft, and this boot, this boot is it's kind of firm, so it's a little you know hard to work with. All right, but just take your time, maneuver it slowly. Edge it over, and it'll get there. So, got the boot over. So the next thing I'm going to do is to get the knuckle back in place onto the shaft. And in, and at this point, it would be helpful if you know you had someone in the car that could you know turn not, not so much turn the steering wheel but rock it to get this part lined up to help you get it lined up it will definitely be helpful here what i what i did was i actually was doing it myself so I had to go in the car and you know play with the steering wheel a little bit to try to get it to line up so what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get the knuckle down onto the shaft so I'm actually using the pry bar to push down on it I, I'll brace one side of the pry bar on the frame of the car and then the other the other side on the knuckle and push down on it so you can see it's at an angle here I'm trying to get it lined up once it's straight it should go right down okay so you've got it straight so now I just got to push down on it and there we go okay so at this point I gotta get my bolt in place And if your bolt, if your bolt won't catch, you know, you, you might have the, you might not have the knuckle down far enough or you might have it too far down. So you got to play with it a little bit and until you feel that bolt catch, then you know you're in the right position. Okay. So I moved it up a little bit and I'm going to try to catch the bolt again. And there we go. All right, so I got the bolt retightened. So now I can put my cover back in place. Snap it back on. These positions are kind of tight, so it just takes a little patience. All right, so I got my two rack and pinion uh, bolts, the left and the right, back in place. All right. So I got to get that one all the way in and retightened. Then I'm reinstalling the sway bar. And this is after you have tightened your two Rack and pinion bolts. So I came to the other side, making sure it's lined up properly. Getting this, this is uh, the bushing back in place okay everything back in place and tighten down 
Remember, these are 13 millimeters. Got my uh, linkage reconnected, both sides. My outer tie rod back in place, tightened, and my pin for my for the tie rod nut. Cap sealed properly. So now I'm going to go back and reinstall my um, fluid lines. And you will need at least a quart, at least a quart if, of um, power steering fluid, depending on how much fluid you lose doing this job. But I'll, I'll try to get at least a quart. I have a quart on hand just in case. And when you're when you're refilling the system, it's going to take a, a little bit of time because what you're going to do is fill the system, start the car, let it run for a few minutes, cut it off, let it cool down. Because what happens is when the system is is uh, empty or low, when you if you run the car for too long, it it the fluid gets hot and it boils so it will raise up it will raise up in the reservoir so you won't be able to add more fluid at once so you have to it's a gradual process of adding the fluid okay so once you get the reservoir full you want to out out keep the car on the jack while i'm doing this and just keep turning the steering wheel left to right until you you know get the air to gradually come out of the system okay you're gonna gradually turn left and right turn cut the engine off let it cool down add more fluid you know just keep doing that process until the it, it will be noisy in the beginning and get quieter and quieter as you add more fluid and there's less air in the system Okay. So I, I I didn't film the part of adding the fluid after the job after the completion of the installation. So I'm just trying to talk you through it right now where if you're not experienced in doing that, you know, it will take a little little time. Okay, don't just think you're gonna once once the rack is installed, you're just gonna refill it with fluid and you're good to go. No, it, there's actually a bleeding process. So once you fill it the first time, you start, you turn the steering wheel side to side. Stop. You, you you're gonna turn the steering wheel side to side. I, I would say five to six times, left to right, all the way, left to right, all the way. Okay, then you cut the engine off, let, let it cool down for a few minutes, add some more fluid, and do the same process again. And you're going to continue doing that process over and over, you know, until you hear the noise. It's going to make a winding noise, and it will get less and less and less until the, the system's completely full and all the air is out of the system. Then you'll be good to go. All right, so... You see here, I'm getting these lines retightened. And when once all the lines are tightened, there is one more step, which is under here where I said these lines had to be popped out from this little plastic clip. I'm gonna make sure they're popped back in. It's like a support for these lines to keep them from vibrating against each other or against the frame of the car. Because, you know, over time that will cut, you know, cut holes in the lines and create a leak. So, 
that's what it looks like when they're clipped in okay that's them clipped in and that's pretty much it so from here is the bleeding process and you should be good to go this is DIY Yachty. Hope this video was helpful. Bless up.